jumped across these lands will roam. Taking my food and booze in a drought, no less, and scared all the women with these band of low down, filthy, stinking sons of Irish curs. Oh, I mean, no offense. That's the type of talk that I get a bullet into you. You threatened me, Robbie. You know, for all the tales of the dead and Captain Moonlight, none mention murder. Am I to be the first to carry a nun like that? You may well be. I wonder what I think. You've not already told me. I think he's a lawyer, and he's gang her a bunch of idiots! <laughs> I challenge you right now to tell me one thing he's done of note, one thing that makes me worthy of his fear. A man walks into a fancy homestead like this, guns as his means of invitation, then proceeds to pour in the party. I'm drunk, you're drunk! I'm drunk! The guests are laughing and dancing. <laughs> Don't know how many stick-ups you've been in, McDonald, but this is the best damn one I've ever been witness to. The man don't deserve your fear. He deserves your thanks. Mush things! Why is all this user? shrieking and jabbering? A man can't hear himself drink! Don't you know this free booze to be had? Free, yes. That's what it is. Let me thank you for it. We're only here not to be drinking, lad. You can only be 15. Boy, and I can be drunk all the same. What's the issue here? Our generous toast is talking ill of the captain. Is he touched? I'm thinking he must be. Not near as touched as the lawyer in there gallivanting with my wife! <laughs> Now, careful there, sir. You don't want to be on the wrong side of moonlight. Right. Not after Edgerton Ooh. and Fiji right. and the rings he <laughs> ran round Pentridge, and not to mention the joke he made in Ned Kelly. What? Where did he? What's this about Ned Kelly then? You mean you don't know? Would I be asking if I did? And you want me to tell you? Obviously. Cause I'll tell well, you. Get on with it then. Fine. I will! This were only a few weeks back. Hey! Working for days at a track. Woo! Got a scarab to eat, but the flies in his heat. Then he tells us we're near in Mansfield. Yeah. 
Octopus. You can be sure there are others like us. No one can tell that their fortunes and fate should be left in the spite of her majesty's stage. Together we stand as brothers in arms with other brothers who too have their cons. Sometimes you must ask for help from those who, in other circumstances, might have seemed somewhat lesser. So I have sent word to the Kelly gang. You haven't. Ned Kelly. The Ned Kelly. The uneducated Irish upstart, yes. We're uneducated Irish upstarts. The scourge of Stringy Bark Creek, that Ned Kelly. Yes, he scourged a creek. Spectacular work. <laughs> it was no prison escape, but it was something. Did I mention he went to Pentridge too and served his whole term? So did you. After escaping from a different prison years earlier. They know Kelly would tell up Aurora and Sir Wiltery. And made a right hash of them. Unlike when I showed the money clutchers of Edgerton that I was no man to be trifled with. Ned Kelly. Had... Enough. I have written Kelly a letter. Oh, can I read it? Can oh. I read it? Dear. Oh. Dear. Once more. Dear Mr. Kelly, you'll be pleased to know that. That I, Captain Moonlight, am friend and not foe. I've been watching your exploits with real fascination. Though you lack some panache, you show true dedication. Though we've little in common, we've both fallen afoul of a corrupt, greedy force, and now we share a goal. It's clear it's too late to go back to before. So join me, Ned Kelly, and we'll laugh at the law. I need someone with your skill to join my ranks and to do the cleaning. Oh, that's a great idea. The cat's getting near unhabitable and clicking into man's job. Have you read this, Ned? It seems to be beckoned. He'll be your captain and you'll be his second. He requests that you join and be his little buddy. Ah, oh, can we go, Ned? Oh, God, will be funny. Tell him regretfully I decline his fine offer and add in a threat. I can't be blocker. I do dearly hope that our two paths will cross because then I'll shoot you. <laughs> it appears the erstwhile scourge of Stringy Bark Creek does not know what is good for him. He will rue the day he crossed me. I would be most appreciative. Deplorable scoundrel. Do you have any idea who I am? Mm. Any idea? Certainly. The correct idea? Less so. The inclination to investigate whatsoever? Not at all. You will regret this. Mark my words. Speak your name true, ruffian, so that I may be sure of the fact. Why, I am most surprised you do not already know. I am none other than Ned Kelly himself. <laughs> So, be sure when you speak to the authorities to let them know just how deplorably I treated you. Oh! I would hate for my reputation to be in any way weakened. Bush <laughs> <laughs> And they were the only ones. Night after night, the captain would go to stagecoaches getting bits and pieces for us to live and tell every single one of them rich and fancy types that he was Ned Kelly and we was his gang. You see, the captain, for all your insults, is a wildly intelligent type. When Kelly gets caught, the hate of the upper class will be fearsome to behold. <laughs> so, a bushranger crossed another bushranger. 
It's hardly worthy of my admiration. No, it's a funny story, though. Is it true that he had a pirate ship in Sydney Harbor? What? I heard rumors is all. Rumors of rapscallery are hardly worth discussing. It weren't a pirate ship, love. How do you know? You weren't there. Nor were you for the Captain Kelly's impersonations, you braggart dunce. Lay off the liquor. I shan't do that. So what was it if not a pirate ship? Well, the captain has a love of the exotic. In particular, a love of Fiji. <laughs> Fiji. Where the devil's that then? Here I taught you were an educated chap, Faulkner. Fiji lies north of here, and is as beautiful a place as human eyes have ever seen. There is food plenty. The water looks to be crystals. The beaches stretch are... for miles in all directions, far as the eye can see, and fringed by palm trees. A man can lose a day sitting beneath him, drinking and looking out to the distant foam. Troubles of this life receding in the simple truth of God's majestic creation. That, lads, is where we're bound. I promise you that is what awaits us once we escape this ungodly country. A land of peace and comfort and joy, where hearts are full and, and, and people are kind. A land that will treat us better than this burnt out rock with its Philistine inhabitants ever could. And you've seen it all for yourself. Happiest days of my life are in Fiji, my boy. Days I mean to return to! There's a purity to this place. A peace. I've not felt it before. Put a complicated mind in an uncomplicated place and it can work itself out. The farm's looking good. Better every day. Bit by bit I'm seeing that potential unfold. It could be the center of a whole new civilization. One that we helped start. Civilization is overrated. You have your doubts about going back. Doubt employs uncertainty. You don't have to. It's best I do it. You can be of more use here. I don't know the first thing about building and planning. You won't be gone long. Not enough for me to miss you. Not enough for Australia to get you down. Just to take all the money, grab the seeds, and be on the next ship back. A few weeks at most. You shall walk these beautiful beaches in my company before you know it. And the money's all there? All of it. Everything we have. The foundation of the future we will build. That ship, the why not? I wish to purchase it, along with a case of whiskey. Oh, and where is the nearest brothel? I would understand this in a mean, low-spirited monk. But in you, it's monstrous. A shameful paradox. And that's where we stayed for the next year, moored in Sydney Harbour on the Why Not, having parties that became the toast of the town. And he never went back to Fiji? Oh, oh, to stop trying to be fat or Faulkner, I can ask the man a question. Not yet, but we will. Once we get to, to Sydney, we'll get the first boat there. How welcome can he be after he took the money and ran? Boy, would he have done that if he loved Fiji so much? The captain's motives are... Often mysterious. What's mysterious about that? He had money, a ship, booze, all the women he could want. Boy would rather that than Fiji. <laughs> Here I was, thinking his taste didn't go that way. What was that, McDonald? Uh, nothing. Please, continue justifying the crimes of the man. Oh, you just don't think it makes sense. If he's going back, he must love it. Why are you relieved? The only thing that don't make sense is I'm only having the ship for a year. Well, that's the part that makes perfect sense. He went to prison, didn't he? Oh, that's right. Enough booze. That's what you get for stealing vast sums of money from a business partner. Moonlight went to prison for the Edgerton robbery. Managed to keep ahead of the law for his daring feat for years, though. Let them traps on quite the merry chase. He told me he were innocent of Edgerton. Well, which is it? The lad is drunk, MacDonald. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Moonlight robbed Edgerton, and it were a more daring act than you could ever dream of in your life. 
your simple little wife. A bank the size of a fortress, walls as high as the Queen's own palace, riches beyond imagining, and a hundred armed guards to boot. The captain, with only his revolver. Edgerton can only have a population of fifty. It's barely a town. I don't know what to tell you, but the bank. Well, I've been to Edgerton. I went there with a uh, suitor years ago. What? I remember laughing at a bank that had canvas walls. Oh, makes you well, whatever the case. The guards had it surrounded. Does not share a wall with the school? A canvas wall? Well, I don't know what to tell you, but there were a bank in Edgerton, and that bank had money in it, and by morning it didn't. The captain took hostage of a nat man by the name of Ludwig Julius Broom, a cowardly fool if there ever was one. Broom was the clerk of the bank, and through him the captain got his claws and all the money of the town, and a distinctive large chunk of gold. Well, that's not what he told me. He were elsewhere that night off visiting a lady or some such. It were Brun and the drunken schoolmaster James Simpson would rob the bank of the gold and the captain take the fall. Wait, wait, do you not remember the part about the captain writing the letter to protect Brun? No. I hereby certify that L. W. Brun has done everything within his power to withstand the intrusion and taking of money, which was done with firearms. Captain Moonlight, sworn. The captain was a man of honor, see? Honor that Brun did not deserve. Thick set, man. Thick set I may well be, Brun, but love, observe my heart, you utter buffoon. Utter? The truth here is that were I to be the man responsible for this most heinous crime, I would have acquitted myself with a level of skill and forethought that clearly eluded the perpetrator of this particular devilry. Observe the writing of that letter, the rough scrawl. You made me write it? In complete darkness. A match. Just the one. Oi. And that was enough for you to write that whole letter. Even considering the childlike nature of your assault on the art of handwriting, the time it takes for a single match to burn is not near enough for you to complete that letter. Your story, dear Luddite Brune, does not hold up, although I'm hardly surprised. Silence, Your Honor, I'm cross examining the suspect. He's a witness, not a suspect. In this case, I fear the, may, the two may not be mutually exclusive. May I continue? You may. <clears throat> oh, I stand here before you, both noble and true, to pledge you the facts, the facts that are true. For I love the law, but the law, it hates me. But without a voice, I'll never be free. The witness and suspect are one and the same. This idiot's play, the idiot's game To those who would judge, now I'll speak true So here is a fact, a fact that is true He's a fool and worse than one that brings kangaroo I don't like him and really, neither should you His family are in red magpies and they smell like pots of food He's got a face like a boring pod and his beard is quite shit Order! <laughs> I invoke thy right As a man of God I swear my facts are true I'll swear it in blood This community knows me I'm a man of fine standing But if I am quite honest That night I wasn't standing I was with a young woman Who shall not be named I'd rather take the blame Than bring her some shame My honour precludes me From dobbing others in And here's some more facts That should help me win He's a fool and worse than one that brings kangaroo. Oh, I don't like him, but really, neither should you. He's got the breath of a rat and not that he's a negative and he's gorgeous. He's a legion of and he's beautiful. He's a fool and worse than one that brings kangaroo. I don't like him, but really, neither should you. He's got the breath of a rat and not that he's a negative and he's gorgeous. He's a legion of and he's There's no honor here! He worked with a woman! I was with somebody not involved with the robbery! So 
Mr. Simpson, describe to me how he spent the early hours of the morning after the robbery took place. Well, there was some foe in town who weren't familiar with the place where they ain't going to <laughs> Specifically, where did you take them? My schoolhouse. Your schoolhouse? Well, just the night before, something rather exciting happened. Well, there were a robbery, weren't there? <laughs> Aye, a robbery in the bank that shared a wall with the schoolhouse. And it was in the schoolhouse that the alleged perpetrator made the simple broom write out a letter absolving him of any wrongdoing. The writing of which you demonstrated to your distinguished guest. Aye. Aye. Indeed. The question I have for you is how you found out about the robbery if, at that time, the rock-headed Bruin was informing the police of the crime. Aye. 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 See? The captain couldn't have robbed. The back. Where you put the bottle down and use your head for five bloody minutes? Well, I'm a bush range and I'll use me head for putting booze in and not else. Moonlight went to prison because his money from Fiji ran out and he tried to pay for the grub with the gold from Edgerton. So, he's an idiot and a scoundrel then. He was out of money. Edgerton was years ago and he was found innocent. Why worry? But hang on! How did he have the gold if he didn't do it? Oh my good lord! Did the bandit tell a little lie? However, will we come to terms with this alarming reveal? That's how we did rob the bank. Of course you robbed the bank, you brainless infant. You went to jail for it and got precisely what he deserved. You know, I was gonna ask how young lads like you get caught up with such an errant scoundrel, but I think your stupidity seems to have answered the question for me. Well, he's the stupid one, not me. Right. Well, then explain how you did get caught up with your captain. Hmm? It's all being most amusing. After he got, after he and Nesbitt got out of prison, he went on a lecture tour. A lecture tour? A lecture about what? So why do the country's in the pit when the law allows men like him to speak publicly? Well, that was just a thing, Falker. The law didn't allow it. All the captain wanted was to make an honest living. A dishonest man can hardly make an honest living. What position of authority was he speaking from then? He spoke about bush ranging, of course. Oh, of course. Professional bush ranging comes with many important stipulations. Otherwise, you look as much a fool as that idiot Ned Kelly and his band of irksome second rangers. The first, and of course, most important rule of being a decent bush ranger is proper beard maintenance. <laughs> you must look like a gentleman, a scoundrel, a poet, and a killer all at once. As such, your beard needs to be just long enough to give off a sense of devil may care, rapscallionry, but not so long as to look insane. <laughs> A bit of oil, so as you use for keeping your revolver working properly, is a good start to keeping your beard perfectly shaped. But not a bad idea to have a few stray hairs sticking about the place to create the necessary aura of unpredictability. The captain never said not to the sort. We only say that because you can't grow beard. But this is some right nonsense, this guff about my beard, which I can grow, and about the captain teaching such rubbish. It's coming in. Of course, the first and most important skill of being a bush ranger is correct stagecoach interference. It is the highwayman's bread and butter hauling up the transports of the rich and taking their belongings. And if you can't do that correctly, you are in entirely the wrong industry. Land yourself squarely in the middle of the road as the coach approaches. Do not draw your gun as that might give them warning. Wait until the coach slows. Politely greet the driver to keep him at ease, and then with an almighty cry of bail up, have your gun aimed square between his eyes. If you have a gang, this is also a good time for them to emerge from the scrub and surround the coach. <laughs> Always treat your victims with dignity and respect. Funny, now I was just talking to the captain before. He told me he was touring on prison reform. Inside the walls of Petridge, I, I spoke to many wretched unfortunates. And I heard many stories of woe. Some had stolen loaves of bread to feed starving families. Others attempted to, to take back horses that already belonged to them. Some got into fights to defend their own honor. And others stood up against the constabulary who, who were bullying their loved ones. In fact, what struck me was how few had truly committed that which we, in good conscience, could call a crime. 
I have never pretended to be a saint. But eight years for a robbery I didn't commit seems somewhat extreme. And greater sentences for crimes that may have been committed but under justifiable circumstances seems like the true injustice, does it not? The law didn't want him saying such things, so they shut him down. I as much a right to say my piece as anyone. You've no right whatsoever, Scott. The lecture circuit is for intellectuals and those with something worthwhile to communicate. You're none of the above. You cannot silence what the people wish to hear. There is a line around the, the block for my people don't know what's good for them. We're saving them from themselves. George. Let's go. You might have stopped me here. Oh, I doubt you'd be so lucky at the next venue. Or the next. You can't predict my every move. Don't fool yourself, Scott. Every theatre, every stage, even little ones at the sort of disreputable pub your lot likes to frequent. We've got watched, spouting your lies and filth won't bring you any money. Best case scenario, you die penniless and forgotten in a cell. Boy, we'll head north to Sydney and beyond. Try it. Sydney knows who you are as well as we do here. There's no winning for you. Follow you the whole way if we have to. Make sure no station gives you food or rest. Maybe, if we're lucky, you won't die in a cell after all. Maybe you'll die in the wild. Your body will be eaten so quickly it won't even be an offence to innocent eyes. Fuck is one and hollow cheeks and mouth is eyeballs they glare. Fuck is teeth and anguish clenching. It's the anguish of despair. Yo, since three days gone, his penance gone, his penance. That jail, and since three days, no food has passed those lips of parchment pale. Where shall I turn, my love? Where shall I turn? If a man shoots you dead, then drapes a blanket over your corpse. It doesn't lessen the crime. He's been kind enough, yes, but it does not change the fact that he is robbing me and holding my family and employees hostage. Don't give me that tribe about desperation. Desperation doesn't require him stealing every drop of alcoholic substance in this house. Does a man who's experienced hardships not deserve a respite? Not when the hardships are wrought by his own hand. You beg sympathy and understanding for the man, Rogan all the while ignoring the simple fact that he has brought this all on himself. He made the choices, not anyone else. He chose to steal the money from PJ. He chose to rob the bank at Edgerton. What 
trying to do those things. The man, the man is clearly educated and intelligent. He used to be a parster, for Christ's sake. So please, please, with all your insight into the black heart of Captain Moonlight, please explain to me why! You must know he is lied to you. He told you he contacted the Kelly gang and heard back. Near Mansfield. It's common knowledge the Kellys are hiding out north. And please, while you're out on the road, where exactly did Kelly address his reply? You tell me you robbed stagecoaches pretend to be Kelly. Well, none of you saw him do it, despite being on the road with him this entire time. That's enough, McDonald. If it really was stealing all this gold, would you be so desperate now? Of course not. I said that's enough. What a lie that he was innocent and innocent. What a load of utter shite. He can't even give me story straight. The man is a lawyer, a coward, a braggart, and most of... He may have erred in his youth, but doesn't the Bible say we all deserve forgiveness? It's the law that you so strictly abide by, Madonna. The law of this corrupt, to the core country that has stopped him from seeking his own. He tried. He tried to take what he had and what he learned and turn it into something good. He tried to make a difference so that life would go better for those after him so the people wouldn't have their time to cry! And the law spat in his face. Now here we are. And you, you simple, narrow-minded idiot, refuse to hear what's so obviously being conveyed to you that the only law he breaks now is the one that drove him to this point. Shoot me. Complete the great story of Captain Moonlight where we all know the end. In bloodshed. means to an end. Once we're in Fiji, all of our crimes will be a distant memory. I still believe you'll make it there. I do. If the captain can survive eight years in Pentridge with dreams of Fiji, then I can survive sun months on the road. You've never even been to Fiji. It won't be nothing like what you imagine. Lie to us. He wouldn't lie to Nesbitt, and Nesbitt says the captain promises peace and beauty for the rest of our days. Doesn't sound like peace and beauty is what he wants in life. Nesbitt's the younger fellow, one who never leaves his side. The captain always said what got him through Pentridge was Nesbitt and Fiji.
The point had to be made, sir! I demand you give me back my knife! Try that again, and you'll be meeting the hangman a lot sooner than you'd like. It was a bit funny, though, you must admit. Shut your trap. <laughs> from the meeting. What did you do? Held up a block of the prison with a knife. Where'd you get a knife? By half ways. I'm surprised you weren't shot for that. Mm. I think I might be too entertaining to kill. Andrew George Scott. Or Captain Moonlight, if you prefer. I don't. James Nesbitt. What are you in for, Nesbitt? Ah, best you don't know. McCroings run deep and will make faint hearts quail. A stolen one pound note from a drunk. You? Robbed a bank. Well, I suppose the two are sitting in the same territory. One pound. I suppose I should be used to this by now, but even so. We think I'm well past anger. Had enough run-ins with the Lords a lot, it don't get easier. If you're poor or Irish, God forbid both, you might as well be giving directions to the nearest jail at birth. <laughs> Makes you wonder if there's a way to change it. Perhaps. If someone were willing to speak up. I tend to imagine the only people with those inclinations would reside behind these walls. Hi. Who is that? Mm. How long have you got? A uh, couple more years. Yourself? The same. Oh, yeah. I almost start to doubt the end of the cup. I've been behind bars before, lad. It does come. It takes a while, but it does. What do you do when you get out? I want to go to Fiji. Where's that? <laughs> a place beyond your wildest dreams. A place where None of the ugliness that blights Australia can exist because... Because there is no ugliness in Fiji. Just peace. Somewhat hard to believe a place like that exists. Mm. Maybe I could take you there. I've got no plans. But then, at the same time, somebody does need to speak up. In my experience, if no one else would do what's important, that usually means God is offering you the job. Ah, would they listen to you? I used to be a pastor. If I can make people believe me when spouting rubbish I don't mean, <laughs> surely I can do the same, saying what I do mean. I suppose that does make sense. I can see it causing trouble, though. My whole life has been causing trouble. Nothing new there. Can't argue with the logic. <laughs> so, what do you say? Should we get out and make a difference? You've known me all of five minutes. Less, but I like you. You're easily pleased. No, I'm not. All right. I'll come. See, that's why I like you. What's why? I knew you'd say yes. I have one condition. Which is? Tell me what really happened with the knife. It was a blunt dinner knife. And I held up a warden's office. I think that makes for a better story. <gasps> Why do you think I did it? Where are you from, back in Ireland? 
But my parents have no idea who I was born here. Have you? From County Down. Oh. Oh, I like the song. No, do not. Do not. <laughs> I can't stand that modern music. Oh, not modern music. <laughs> no, not like a... in Bonbridge Town. County Down. One morning, boy passed him, boy. Stop. Shh. This man I'd seen, always wild and green, and he smiled as he passed me, boy, looking mad with those eyes he had, and a face that was mostly hair. He was clearly bad, but my heart felt glad, as so I took in his deathly stare. From Bantry Bay up to Derry Cay, and from Galway to Dublin town, no man I'd see, but always so green, so I met in the county down. I warned you not to say oh, one, that. One, two, three, four. <laughs> and we won't have this issue. I can't stop them being loyal, James. You can do exactly that. You can stop filling their heads full of dreams of women and glory and rolling beaches free of the law. And you can tell them to leave. They head back without you now. They can find a bit of honest work along the way. Maybe take up at a farm or something. They can have lives. You think I'm lying to them? I think you don't realize what you're doing to me. They believe you, George. And you don't? That's not what I said. Isn't that? George. Is that what this is really about, James? Have you. Have you lost faith in me? Huh? You want to turn tail and roll George. even after everything I've done? George, I wasn't talking about me, I was talking about them. For better or worse, I'm going nowhere. I'm well past the stage where that was an option. And there, they're not our fate. Wernicke is only 15. Rogan's not much older to your reason. Really you? No. But I know what I signed up for. Tell them to leave, George. Let them have their futures. I promise them free to you. I promise them freedom, and I keep my promises, James. What happens when we get to Fiji? 
What happens when we come face to face with all those who you didn't keep promises to? What then? They won't dare cross me. You said that about the police. You said that about every station we've been to. There's only so much you can say you're the terrifying Captain Moonlight without proving it. You want me to prove it? That's not what Water battery station could be only a mile from here. It's big, plenty of space, lots of booze and food. A chance for respite. They'll turn us away like every other. <laughs> They'll try. What's that supposed to mean? Exactly what it does. George. The thing is, Madame, you think and say what you like. But I've been weeks on the road, and I've heard my fair share of tall tales and campfire yarns. We go nowhere until he decides it's time, and you can shut your mouth before I put a bullet into it. It's men like you who put us in this position in the first place, and I'm well past any inclination for mercy. You keep threatening me in my own home? I do. Fuck. You don't see no evidence whatsoever that you'll act on it. Any of you. That's enough now. Sit down. I hope so. I've said it before and I will say it again. He's not leading you to a better life. He's already dragged you into hell. And will keep dragging you until you're burnt to a crisp, forgotten forever by history where men like you rightly belong. Fuck. Shoot him, Tom, shut his fat mouth for good. <laughs> you heard the drunk child, Rogan. I've done what you warned me not to. I've insulted your captain again and again. Are you going to silence me? Well? Enough is enough! Wagner, drop it! I do no such thing, Helen, no such thing at all! On your knees, criminals. The tables have turned then, MacDonald. Will you be the one to shoot? Get down before I put you down. Did that sound better in your head? Fucker, what are you doing? Take it back our home! You've got one gun against a gang of bush rangers! <gasps> Come now, Claude. You've not been listening to all the stories. These men are no bush rangers. These were poor wretches who barely committed a real crime between them. This is no dangerous pack of ruthless killers. These are the lost children under the guidance of a pathetic snake. Men who's built a life on betraying those who trusted him. Where is the audacity in that? Where is the bold, dashing foundation of a legend? This isn't the Kelly Gang Claude. Nor are they Jack Donahue or Mad Dog Morgan or Ben Hall. There is reason to fear a bush ranger. These men are no bush rangers. I had all night to prove it, whether by ballot or bullet. If you feel that is the case, perhaps you haven't been listening closely enough. I don't recommend it! Can't see me, Faulkner. You can hear my voice. You've heard my stories. You see me make your station me all. Now, you have to guess. Because everyone else in this room is too terrified to tell you. Am I holy? It's my pistol aimed square at your back, ready to drop you. Do I have the guts? My gun's on your man. It is at that. But then what if I'm not holding a weapon? What if I'm just standing here bluffing? Will you shoot, Rogan, based on uncertainty alone? A lad of 21. That make you, McDonald. The boat will be yours. Oh, you can say that, but would you believe it? <laughs> no 
Bush Ranger becomes one to necessity. We may not state it, but we we share a common code. A code ingrained in us by the injustice of those who purport to uphold the law and instead flout it. The shooting a young man in cold blood, a man who had ample opportunity to hurt you but didn't, fall within that code. You may despise Bush Rangers, McDonald. You may despise us, although you claim we aren't Bush Rangers. But what you'll become if you pull that trigger is a whole lot worse. Helen, is he holding the gun? choices. One, exercise your power and shoot Rogan. Two, turn and try to shoot me in the process gambling that I'm not armed. Although if I'm not, then it's no better than if you shot Rogan. Or three, drop the gun and let us all return to the party. What if I turn around and don't shoot you? You'd be at my mercy. That's true. If I walked in here unarmed. It's your choice, Wagner. What kind of man do you think I am? Traps are here. They got the place around us. Well, I don't know how many. Captain, what do we do? Captain. George. George. <coughs> what do we do? George. Mr. Scott. George. Mr. Scott, what happened next? They opened fire. We shot back. And. Wernicke was the first to go down. Stop. Sorry to hear that. Do you know who it was? What about Nesbitt? What about him? In your own words, what happened to James Nesbitt? When he is down, bastard! They'll regret every miserable day they live! line of work didn't deserve better. I don't want to be here, George. I don't. I never wanted to hurt anyone. We need to fight. We can end it. They'll hang us. Then we'll die together. James, we're so close. We survived this and no one can stop us. We can, we can go to Fiji, we can make a life. There is no Fiji, George. Not for us. Don't say things like that. Look at me. I am Captain Moonlight. You know what I've done? I promise oh, you. I know. Lies. Stories. I don't care. Any of them. I don't care about Captain Moonlight. I care about Andrew George Scott. That's the man I love. No more death. End it.
I know how this ends. You needn't speak the words. There's no mercy for the likes of us. And I don't intend to fight for what I know is not forthcoming. But I wish to make one thing clear. It was I who shot Constable Bowen. I alone. No one else was culpable. The boys with me, they, they were just innocent, lost in the world. I took them under my wing, and when I made the mistakes I made, they were dragged into it. I may be in no position to make requests, but I request you take that into consideration when it comes to their sentences. The crimes were mine. I wish to make another request. Just one. For myself. May I? After you hang me, I wish to be buried with James Nesbitt. Side by side. And above our graves, place nothing more than a rock. I need no name or signifier of who lies there. Just a rough, unhewn rock. The sort one might look at and consider that had someone taken the time or given the love and effort required, that rock might have been something truly beautiful. Something special and spectacular. Something more. That is all, Your Honor. A rough, unhewn rock. I will take it into consideration. It's the nature of man to shape all he can, to smooth out the stone that is a rock. But hearts ain't smooth, they're goring as fuck. Smoothing out hearts can be tough. So why must we fix what is bent? Like straightening it could make it right. When everything's bent, it's the straight who look fucked. So living with kings is life. Send me away to be with my own. At least it's be on its own.
taken in a procession to Gundagai Cemetery, where finally his last request was granted. Till this day he lies there, side by side with James Nesman. Together forever, beneath a rough, unhewn rock.
time. 